everyone. My name is Chris Harris. I am a senior solution consultant here at Thomson Reuters. Today we're going to be talking about how we're helping our customers um, navigate the new world of the Superfund chemical excise tax. So first and foremost, we know this was passed in November. It's effective July 1st. Companies are going to have a compliance obligation every two weeks starting July 15th and a quarterly compliance obligation um, in a more formal sense thereafter. Um, but we understand that we understand the urgency. So leaving this up here, uh, we do have information on what we're looking at as far as the notices. Um, but we are actively looking at this from a content, from a functional point of view to see how we can better assist our clients. So the way we're doing that is through our indirect tax engine. So one source indirect tax determination for those familiar with our tax engine, if you will, it's the same engine that houses our sales and use tax content or international content for VAT, things like that. Um, but we realized the, the primary component that we're focusing on is the calculation. We understand that there's a list of 42 chemicals that have been defined. They also have rates from the IRS. We also understand that the IRS has a list of substances that have been defined, but there's no rates that have been yet been published on those. So from our perspective, what we're looking to do um, is focus on the content first, which means we will be looking at taxable chemicals and substances to add those as products. We will be attaching rates to those to the extent the IRS publishes them, publishes them. And then on a go forward basis, we'll be maintaining that content in our enterprise cloud solution on a go forward basis, which could help to mitigate the impact on any native uh, setups that you may be considering um, kind of on a, from a long term perspective as more chemicals get added to the list, more substances get added to the list, et cetera. We are looking to add that content to mitigate some of that effort from a native setup perspective in your ERP. Um, so without further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into that tax engine that we just spoke about. And this is the reporting module within our enterprise cloud solution. So what I've done is I put a fairly simple report together, but keep in mind that this solution can handle up to 700 fields coming from um, the source system. So through the integration or the batch process, um, we can handle as many fields as it can be passed through, whether or not they're used for calculation or from a reporting perspective. So you can see here, there's three fields I want to focus on right now. You'll see the gross quantity. You'll see the conversion from unit of measure and then the fee unit of measure. So what this is important for is that our solution with our oil and gas volumetric functional components that were added back in 2019 can calculate the, the Superfund chemical excise tax as a fee on quantity with a unit of measure conversion because we understand that not everybody's going to keep track of volumetrics in the form of standard U.S. tons. So you can see that we've done that here. We've got the tax amount and then out to the right here, just some examples of maybe some fields that may need to be pulled through from a compliance perspective, taxable chemical, et cetera, if we're talking substances and what have you. So this, re this reporting mechanism is flexible. It's also API enabled, so we can extract in large data volumes and get you the data you need in a meaningful format so that you can facilitate those downstream compliant processes when it comes to evaluating taxes paid and potential refunds on tax-free sales or exports, things of that nature as a part of this new legislation or reinstated legislation, right? So how do we get there? Looking at that, we're going to come into our model scenario tool. This is where I simulate transactions, basically mimicking a real-time or a batch call to our tax engine for calculation purposes. I'm going to resort these real quickly, expand this briefly, and go straight into one of the examples. So as this is pulling up, what you're going to see first is the document level information. So every field out here to the left is document information, uh, the exception clearly being the line item information here. So you've got the basic information on the transact transaction information tab. You can see that we can evaluate point of title transfer. We can also leverage ENCO terms or delivery terms rather. Um, but the important part here, because there's a lot of moving parts to how this will be managed, if it is a requirement, we can facilitate calculations through goods movement or movement types, things of that nature, whether it be batch or real time and depending on the ERP. So that is a possibility, um, just so you're aware. The other piece here is that we can accommodate at the document line level up to 40 fields uh, that we were to refer to as flex fields. 
Um, these can include things from the chemical taxes paid to say the taxable chemicals we saw in the report, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever the requirements need to be, if we can pass that information through the engine somehow, we can get it into the reporting module. So this is an example at the document level where those fields will be put into place. So non-standard data. Looking at the information, you can see that this is propylene. You can see that we've got the unit of measure in the inbound data being pounds, quantity being in pounds, gross amount out here. Looking at the results, what you will see, and this is a transaction in Texas. So you will see a bunch of stuff, and I made for the purpose of this, the assumption that there's no resale certificates involved, et cetera, that can be accounted for. So these authorities on the sales tax side can be exempt. But you'll also notice we've got the existing US federal excise tax authority where, and I've gone ahead and configured a custom rate and rule to invoke this fee. Going forward, that will be a part of standard content, so it's more of a mapping exercise. The other part, we do have the option, depending on the state, if it's a requirement for contributing authorities, um, meaning that these excise taxes, if required, can be rolled into the sales tax base of that would be required for the sales and use tax calculations. So at the end of the day, my message to the market, to our customers, is that we can facilitate that calculation either on the purchase or the sales side. We can accommodate that. Um, we can accommodate certificates. We can potentially leverage licensing from the IRS if needed to drive an exemption. All of those things, and this is done through one integration, one tool, so that you get all the results in one time. You're not having to loop it through a couple different integrations or anything along those lines. This is all part of standard functionality as far as the calculation uh, is concerned within our solution today. And then we are adding the content going forward. So the last thing I want to leave everybody on is the slide deck. Just one last slide. We understand the importance. We understand that this is going to be an impact on your cash flow. This is going to be required to think through different ways to track and monitoring tax free inventory versus taxable inventory, et cetera. Um, what we want to make sure that our customers and the market understands is that we can help facilitate the calculation. We can help facilitate getting the data out in a meaningful way. And then we can work with you. We can work with our partners to figure out if there's end to end components that need to be accounted for as well, whether that may include an altered workflow, leveraging an API to the engine to get the data out. Um, we can do that as well. So with that being said, I'd like to thank you for your time. Um, if you've got questions, concerns, feel free to reach out to your account representatives or Thompson Reuters and generally we'd love to talk to you and figure out the best way that we can help you and your business uh, tackle the challenge that is the Superfund Chemical Excise Tax. So thank you. Goodbye.